Hello, welcome everyone to our uh, free webinar about advanced techniques uh, in correlative uh, AFM in SEM measurements, specifically about electrical modes, conductive AFM and Kelvin probe uh, force microscopy and uh, magnetic force microscopy. Uh, let me introduce our, ourselves. My colleague Radek Hello. is application specialist at Nanovision and I'm Veronica, head of application department. First, I will shortly introduce the compact uh, atomic force microscope light scope with its benefits and I will further focus on electrical and magnetic techniques. Later, Radek will focus uh, on showing us how to actually measure magnetic signal and uh, surface potential using Kelvin probe force microscopy. Uh, but before we begin, I would like to invite you to type your questions into the chat. We will try to answer them during the webinar. There will be also a Q&A section at the end where we select a few of the important questions and as answer them loud. Uh, I would like to introduce a little bit uh, of our company. Nanovision was founded in 2015 as a spin-off of Brno University of Technology and the Central European Institute of Technology. Brno is a city of universities, technology and science with a rich history of microscope development. That is why both Thermo Fisher and Tescan Electron Microscope divisions are located here. It's estimated that approximately 30% of all scanning electron microscopes in the world come from Brno. The correlative sample analysis that combines the atomic force microscopy and scanning electron microscopy was achieved by integrating the compact atomic force microscope called LightScope into the scanning electron microscopy uh, chamber. Uh, integration of LightScope into SEM is quite easy, as you can see in the scheme. LightScope body is installed on the SEM rotation and the signal is going to the controller nanobox, which is accessible via Wi-Fi or internet connection. This way, both SEM and AFM softwares are operated from the same computer. In this part, I would like to quickly present you a few benefits of LightScope uh, in, inside SEM chamber. Thanks to AFM in SEM and the CPAM technology, we are able to analyze the sample in a very complex way. And how do we do that? So as you can see here, we have the surface topography measured at the same time with uh, inside SEM with uh, secondary electrons, backscattered electrons and AFM has other techniques, so you, for instance, you can measure the hardness or you can use uh, uh, EDS detector as well uh, to find the composition, elemental composition of your material. Um, but first I would like to introduce a little bit the correlative probe and electron microscopy technology or shortly CPEM technology. On the sample, the electron beam points very close to the uh, to the AFM tip with a constant offset. During scanning, the AFM tip and electron beam remain static, and so sample is being scanned only by the light scope piezo scanners uh, underneath the sample. It enables us to simultaneously detect uh, and acquire AFM and SEM signals at the same time, in the same place, and under the same conditions. This technology is actually unique to LightScope and was developed for seamless data correlation. Second important field is an in-situ analysis. Since we integrate AFM inside the DSEM chamber, all of the measurements are done at the same time, in the same place, and under the same conditions. For instance, thanks to no transfer between chambers, uh, the sensitive samples are not contaminated by air. 
I'm happy to say that our ambassador for in-situ analysis is Mark Willinger from ETH Zurich. And it was very nice as he claimed that Lightscope is like a Swiss army knife inside your SEM. So simply uh, there are added AFM functionalities which widens the possibilities inside the SEM chamber. I would like to also enhance extremely precise localization of the area of interest and the tip navigation. Because thanks to SEM resolution and the tip visibility, you are really able to navigate the, to the exact spot while saving a lot of time. And so what is the, the benefit of Lightscope in uh, SEM chamber? The first we were talking about the CPM technology. Uh, it's really very easy to integrate uh, AFM inside SEM. So we call it plug and play SEM integration as it can be installed within five minutes into your chamber. Uh, since it's very uh, small AFM, it's compatible with other SEM accessories such as focused ion beam or gas injection system. Uh, the software is web based, so you can easily control your measurement remotely. It can be customizable. For example, scanner range can change. Also, the resolution then is different. And it's very easy to learn in the software. Uh, Lightscope also supports a variety of self sensing probes which also then means that the measuring modes are, uh, there are several measuring modes which can be used. Uh, about the sensing probes, uh, we use tuning fork based probes uh, such as Akiyama probe or nanoprobe magnetic for magnetic measurements. We use piezo resistive based probes uh, for electrical measurements and the mechanic, mechanical properties. Or there are other uh, probes which can be used. Or we can customize also for a uh, holder for other probes. Uh, as we learned about several self sensing probes, I did not quite mention what techniques Lightscope actually provides. Lightscope supports a wide range of measuring modes. We divide the techniques into four groups. The first one is material and mechanical properties, material electrical properties such as KPFM or uh, conductive AFM mapping, magnet material magnetic properties or material electric electro uh, mechanical properties. And today, uh, let's have a closer look at electrical and magnetic measurements. Investigation of electrical properties plays an important role, especially in semiconductor field, as the world uh, is demanding smaller and smaller devices, but with higher expectations on quality or accuracy. Uh, so first one, conductive AFM mapping represents a common technique where a bias voltage is applied between the, the conductive tip and the sample. Then the resulting current as well as the topography is measured in contact mode as the tip scans uh, the sample surface. Here is an example of microcrystalline silicon which is an interesting material for optoelectronic uh, devices such as solar cells or thin film transistors. Uh, complex analysis is a key to real understanding of the properties of cathode metal, uh, powders. Uh, and so knowing the correlation between electrical, morphological and chemical properties enables uh, us to find a proper material for for instance for rechargeable recha batteries. As the powder is prone to fast oxidation, in-situ analysis in vacuum environment is essential. 
Secondly, as uh, some of the powders, powder particles are quite big, SEM wide field imaging enables us to precisely choose the area of interest and navi navigate the probe to that spot. Uh, when the place was chosen, the conductivity measurements with uh, secondary uh, electrons and AFM topography were uh, measured and also together with uh, EDX analysis of different materials. And then we can correlate the data. Here is visible the AFM topography of the cathode powder correlated with uh, secondary electron signal and together with the conductive AFM signal. Another technique measuring electrical properties is Kelvin probe force microscopy. KPFM is measured at uh, using two pass two passes where the topography is measured in the first pass and using the trajectory for the second pass we detect the uh, contact potential difference between the tip and the surface. This way we obtain the local distribution of um, the surface potential as we see the higher or lower potential area changes uh, the amplitude of the os oscillations. One of the application is, for instance, in-situ detection of selectively changed surface potential by electron beam used for targeted deposition in nanotechnologies or semiconductor field. As you see here is a test sample of gold, silicon and aluminum from Bruker and the potential graph along the line, which is visible here, white. Another example of uh, Kelvin probe microscopy is graphene. Graph uh, here on co uh, copper sample. Graphene is a two-dimensional material with great electronic, chemical and structural properties. The fabrication processes are still investigated and optimized. So the complex and precise characterization is necessary. Graphene flakes uh, here are shown, uh, uh, which are shown here, are grown by a CVD on a copper. Um, they can be easily localized by a scanning electron microscope and measure then the differences in roughness and surface potential on a graphene flake and on a copper. Thanks to AFM in SCM, it was possible to measure the sample with a great precision and in situ, avoiding any changes by moving between different microscopes. Let's continue with magnetic uh, properties. Functional magnetic materials, also called the smart materials of the future, are a group of materials having very interesting physical properties which can be affected by external magnetic field. The magnetic properties of these materials then needs to be studied for potential use in, for instance, data storage systems, refrigeration or magnetic recording. Magnetic force microscopy maps the magnetic force gradient above the sample surface as the topography is acquired in the first pass. The magnetic signal is given by the frequency shift changes in the second pass uh, in non-contact mode. As we use Akiyama probes with magnetic material on top of the visible tip, it is possible to measure several techniques simultaneously. Today we will show you uh, AFM, SEM and uh, MFM in situ, but you may also use other SEM accessories and obtain really complex analysis of the sample. There is an example of metastable iron nickel thin film, uh, which, um, which prones to oxidation on air. 
That is why uh, the structure was fabricated using focused ion beam irradiation under different angles in SEM and right away was navigated AFM probe uh, in SEM, which uh, characterized the magnetic and topography signal together with secondary electrons. As you can see here in SEM, there are different phases and different uh, magnetic domains for each irradiation angle. In MFM signal, we can see brighter and darker spots uh, where the domain direction changed across uh, the out of plane from or towards the surface. With this, I would like to pass the word to my colleague who will show us how to actually map the magnetic and electrical properties. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Veronica. With that, we will uh, continue the next part. Uh, this part will be done through two separate videos on two different topics. The first one will be magnetic force microscopy. And uh, the demonstration will be very brief and it will be focused on the typical workflow of measuring this technique. At the very start, we have to exchange the regular Akiyama probe for a nanoprobe magnetic, as we call it, which is a Akiyama probe with magnetic uh, nanowire at the end of the tip. Uh, that is the only difference between a regular Akiyama and the uh, in the use of regular Akiyama and the nanoprobe magnetic. Otherwise, you can insert it into the microscope as usual, and you can then insert the whole microscope into scanning electron microscope. In the nanoview software, the first thing which we have to do is to find the resonance frequency of the probe. We'll turn the microscope on and then sweep the excitation voltage from 40 kilohertz to 50 kilohertz. You can see me here repeatedly zooming in onto the peak to obtain the precise position of the resonance. Once the software detects the resonance frequency, you can simply click Auto PLL to set up a feedback loop in amplitude and phase, which keeps the probe oscillating at its resonance frequency with constant amplitude. Now the probe is above the surface, so it is oscillating freely. By using the auto approach procedure, we can safely get to the contact with the sample where the probe starts tapping the surface. As you can see, this red line loading here on the right side, this is the indication of the position of scanner, which is slowly uh, in cycles getting closer and closer to the probe. After the approach, we have to remember to select an appropriate channel which will receive the signal from the electron microscope. When we switch to the controller of the electron microscope, we have to zoom onto the tip and then select a point in the close vicinity of it. Here we can utilize a spectroscopy mode to collect signal from this point. The signal is then sent via a BNC cable to our microscope, the light scope. And the rest is simple. You just select the offset for the second pass and then, as a bonus, you can use, for example, a script to further optimize the parameters during measurement, such as in this case. This script reduces the noise and it is written in Python. It can control the microscope completely, including, for example, the start of the scanning. As you can see, I just pressed run and the scanning has already started. Here, there is the indication that the microscope is fully controlled by the script. So only minor changes such as tilt correction are left for the user. Now on the left, you can see the topography signal. 
And on the right, you can see the second the secondary electron micro uh, secondary electron signal being collected at the same time. Both of them show diagonal scratch marks on the surface of a hard disk drive. And perpendicular to those scratch drives, there are the magnetic domains concising the data. Basically. Here is the finished image in three dimensions. This is the topography and overlaid over it, there are the magnetic domains pointing out of plane. The next method is a little bit more complicated to set up. This is the heterodyne FM KPFM, which is Kelvin probe force microscopy. And to measure this technique, we use an external lock-in amplifier. Uh, this is connected to, to the light scope via the board at the back. And to save time, we skipped the auto approach procedure. So now, as you can see, if I enable the feedback, the probe goes right into the contact. Then, to get away from the sample, I have to disable the feedback again. And increase the offset. So the probe is now lifted above the surface. Moving in to the controller software of the locking amplifier. First thing we have to do is to enable the excitation of the probe. So the probe is now oscillating. We can then sweep the frequency of this, of this excitation voltage to find its second harmonic uh, frequency. We can copy this frequency into the oscillator number one, and it will serve us as the as a fixed reference frequency, also known as the carrier frequency here. In the mod card, the carrier frequency gets uh, subtracted from the modulation frequency, which in this case is the first resonance, which we obtain from the another sweep. You can see the difference between carrier minus modulation here. When I enable a phase locked loop, which keeps the probe oscillating on its first resonance frequency, the mod card automatically calculates this difference in real time. The calculated frequency is then used to uh, excite electric modulation of this of the probe's movement. And as you can see here, if I decrease the offset from the sample, the blue, orange, and green signals in the plotter increase in their amplitude. These signals are the modulation of the probe's oscillation due to the forces, uh, due to the electric forces. We can sweep the bias voltage on the sample to obtain the typical V-shaped uh, V-shaped function of the modulation as a function of the bias voltage. We can then use this to set up a feedback loop which corrects the bias on the sample to keep the modulation at zero. Once we enable this feedback loop, you can see that the orange, blue and green signals have disappeared and the bias voltage is now kept at, at just the equal size as the contact potential difference. The signal is then sent into the nano view where it is uh, enough to just select the offset for second pass, then enable the feedback so that the probe gets back into the contact, increase some imaging parameters such as the set point of the feedback to get a sharper image, and also speed. And with everything set up, uh, we can start scanning. The first line is already being taken. This is the second pass. And when it finishes, we can see. There is some minor tweaking of the parameters to get rid of the noise in the image and to further uh, optimize. But apart from that, the signal from topography in, collected in first pass is displayed in left and the signal uh, corresponding to the local contact potential difference is displayed in right, coming into the microscope through the 
external input. And here is the resulting image. This is the topography in three dimensions. And overlaid over the top, we can see the contact potential difference, which is uh, higher on one uh, material of the grid and lower on the second one. So this concludes the demonstration. And to summarize what we have shown today, we were talking about LightScope 2.0, which is the second generation of our compact atomic force microscope designed to be used in, co in cooperation with second, uh, scanning electron microscope. LightScope, uni uh, LightScope offers unique CPEM technology, which enables us to acquire complex data. Uh, also enables us to do in-situ analysis without the need to take the sample from vacuum and uh, precisely localize the area of interest. Apart from that, several other measurement modes are available covering the material, electrical and magnetic properties of the sample. We have uh, also briefly described the principle of contactive AFM Kelvin probe force microscopy and magnetic, magnetic force microscopy. We've shown several application examples and a quick demonstration of the workflow for acquiring these two methods, uh, techniques. So with that, we can move to the last part, which is the questions and answers. And so we have, or my colleague Veronica, has selected three questions. So I'll give the word over to her to read the questions. All right, so I have chosen a few questions. The first one is, how can you image the cantilever if the electron beam uh, has a constant offset? Uh, I will also tell one more time a little bit how we proceed when we measure. So first of all, we are uh, using electron beam imaging. So we scan the sample with uh, the electron beam. When we find the location, uh, we navigate the uh, probe and improve the parameters which are necessary for AFM and SEM. And before the CPEM imaging itself, uh, we find really tiny offset between the AFM tip and the electron beam where we want to focus and focus that to one point. This way we stop imaging with electron beam and uh, we start to measure simultaneously with electron beam and AFM probe static and imaging or uh, scanning with the sample uh, using piezo uh, scanner underneath the sample. Uh, the second question is how does the sample exchange work with pre-evacuation chamber installed in scanning electron microscope? So uh, we have a load lock with, with which you can change the probes and change the samples. Mm, there is a link in the chat so you can have a look uh, how it's working. And the third question, how can you change between the techniques? Can I measure everything with one probe? Uh, actually, not everything. There are electrical probes, so you can measure conductive AFM or KPFM with the same probe, but uh, or topography. But for energy dissipation, you measure together with topography using Akiyama probe. Or for... Um, also, if you have the magnetic coating on the tip, you can measure also magnetic properties together. Uh, of course, with secondary electron signal or backscattered signal or other detector in the SEM. 
So actually you can measure a few of the modes together depending on the probe. But it's actually quite easy to change between the probes. So it takes just vacuuming the chamber. So we will stay here a little bit longer. If there are any more questions, we will answer them. Uh, otherwise, I would like to thank you uh, for your attention. And you can contact us anytime on uh, application uh, at nanovision.com or you can have a closer look on our web page. So if you have any question later on, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for your attention.